Ladies and gentlemen, today is October 5th, 2016, and this is the Can't Kill Show, episode 312. Wait, was that 312? Yes, we are on 312. Iterative drawing. My name is Ken Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you to another show. Today, we are going to be talking about iterative drawing. And what the heck is iterative drawing? Well, that is none other than what we're going to see over here. As you will gaze upon this new piece that we're working on, I've been slaving away on it all night and all day because I wanted to have something cool to show you guys, and this is involving not only one of our favorite characters, Mika, but hey, who's this? A new character. Oh, another maid girl. And this one goes by the name of Mocha. And I was also simultaneously trying to set up everything because this is actually a new computer. Well, sort of a new computer. I have an old desktop that needed a new hard drive. And I just recently replaced the hard drive with a solid state and got everything all set up and everything. So I had to readjust. It's amazing how many adjustments and tiny little settings that you have to work with uh, when you set up a new computer. So that's what I was doing all day while trying to actually get this to work. And it's been such a headache, but I know that you guys have been waiting and I thank you for your patience. It just, it really means a lot. So that's enough of the sob story. Let's go ahead and get into today's tutorial because I have some amazing things to show you. Some amazing things and uh, also some things that you may have never seen before, such as and just as a word of caution or a word of just prefacing today's episode, we're not doing the lovely lane, we're not doing the MZ thing because I still need to log into those websites so I can actually see your guys' awesome stuff. We're literally getting right into the time lapse. And hey, look at that. Mm, interesting time lapse there because this is me setting up everything as it should have been. And now you're going to see my complete setup, including some, oh, secret. Secret references right down here. Oh, isn't that awesome? Keenan, you use real people's faces to, to design anime girls? Of course I do. Of course I do, because all good anime faces and all good things in general always come from real life. Always have expressions, always have uh, the 90% eyes theory going on and paying attention to that girl's eyes, getting ideas. And oh yeah, the first thing that you will notice is that we started with a completely different picture, right? We ended up with this one, but we started with a completely different one, and that is this one right here. So this is going to be the original camera angle and the original shot that I was thinking of. And my original idea was, okay, so it's like, it's Mika and Mocha, and they are in uh, basically the equivalent of Akenwild, which is the, the freaking Overwatch map, the new Overwatch map, where it's all like medieval and castle looking. It looks really awesome. So, uh, I, and I was playing some Overwatch uh, the last few nights. I'm actually getting back into it. It's super fun. Um, so I was really inspired. It's like, okay, cool. So let's take like these maid girls and let's put them into like this medieval armor. We were doing this with Mika. Now let's have one with Mocha. Cause I always love shots where you have two characters that are sort of interacting. So I started this off by kind of laying this composition together, right? And after a little while, I started to realize that, hey, you know what? I like this idea, but I feel like we're not shooting it from the right angle. I feel like it could be more interesting, right? Like maybe we're there with them. Because right now, just some kind of, I don't know, the composition was okay, but it just wasn't really feeling that interesting. So uh, the most amazing thing and the most important thing that I learned while I was working at Riot Games is whenever you want to make something look epic, just lower down the camera angle. Whoops lower down the camera angle. So that's what we did here. So now you can see I laid this stuff in and we'll go back to the time lapse in a second. You guys can see how I did this in a time lapse state. But right here, you can see that I have basically kind of cheated perspective, just kind of thrown in some lines. Uh, let me go ahead and draw those in so you can see what I'm referring to. So I've thrown in some lines here, sort of look like this, right? That's what you're seeing here and here and here. Right, so we've got some lines in there that are uh, basically creating our perspective for us, right? And this is a good way to just kind of cheat things, just to kind of get them locked down and ready to go. And uh, I like that, right? I like this general idea, this general grid shape. Threw in some characters there, and I was already thinking, yeah, this looks way better, way, way better. So we're gonna run with that. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to the time lapse. And let's continue with this awesome shot of both my screens both my screens so you can see everything that I'm looking at. And yeah, see, there I am right there on the side, right there laying in. Notice how I actually shrunk down my entire canvas so that way you kind of get a better idea of 
how the camera angle would be shot from that angle. I imagine, hey, this camera is actually shooting from below. It's actually below the floor plane where we'd be looking at them from. So I imagine that maybe there was like a step or a slope that goes down that would allow the camera to actually be beneath the plane that Mika and Mocha are standing on. And uh, not necessarily super important, but it's always good to just kind of keep that stuff in mind. And a good way to get that all figured out and all calculated is to shrink down your canvas, right? Draw a little bit more of the background. Draw a little bit more of what's happening around the characters. That way when you create your frame, you know, you see photographers do this all the time. This is basically you creating a frame and what is in between your fingers is the canvas, right? You got this big like wide open space around you, right? You got this big wide open space that you can see all, all the objects, all this like this 180 degree view, right? It's a wide angle lens. But then when you do this, you change the frame. You change the frame and you're creating a new, a new uh, composition, new composition. So that's basically the gist of what we were doing right there by uh, shrinking down the, the canvas, figuring out all of, figuring out our basic background and then zooming back in with our fingers, right? Reorganizing the frame. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and finish with that and then let's move on to the next part the next part, which is going to be a really fun part. Something that I don't usually tell you guys to do, but I decided to do it now in this one. And I actually would suggest that you guys do it yourselves. Okay, let's go ahead and move into that. What could I possibly be talking about? Well, it's none other than creating a sketch and then creating a new layer. Ah, oh, a new layer and drawing on top of it. Why did I do that? Don't I always tell you guys not to do this? Well, yes, but in this case, it was very important to do so because we, uh, our first sketch was just so, so rough. It was so loose and everything. So a second sketch, right? Even the second sketch is still really rough. And this is about where I usually have my first sketches being, right? To this level of roughness. And then it, you'll see me go through here and kind of refine and uh, kind of dial this in. So that's the reason. Um, so if you're working on a more complicated piece, you wanna find flow, you wanna work on your camera angles, you wanna draw the backgrounds, it's totally okay for you to do just a really rough sketch, lower down that opacity, make a new layer, and begin doing your line layer two, right? Your line layer two, which then you can sculpt into place, or line sculpting uh, can take place on this layer. And we really enjoyed that. Okay, cool. So we're just kind of moving into this last little bit. And um, yeah, just really doing that thing where we figured out all of our perspective lines. I think that's really where this came to our rescue now because now we're really zooming in, right? We're looking through our hands, but we know all the rest of the background. We know where the perspective lines are going. We know the rules that we need to follow in order to make things look semi-real. And this perspective, like I said, it's completely cheated, but you can make it look a lot more believable if you do that thing where you sort of set up your rules early on. Set up your rules when the canvas is small, then zoom it back out, and then you can begin throwing in your the rest of your details. Alrighty then, people. And I got this little rat down at the bottom, <laughs> bottom right. I thought that was pretty cute. He's definitely going to be making it into the final piece there. So that concludes our time lapse. So let's go ahead and move back into this, and let's talk about what we did. Okay, in fact, I think I can actually shrink this down. Do I still have this? Oh, yeah. So you can see as we shrink this down, there's still a lot of our perspective lines in place. A lot of our perspective lines are still in place here. And uh, that really helped us to figure out, or we basically laid down the rules here. And as I said, you're kind of laying this stuff in. You wanna think about obviously your horizon line and the horizon line is going to be below our frame. It's gonna be below our frame. It's gonna be kind of somewhere over here, right? So you can see, you can kind of cheat it and kind of make it go like this. All right, let me use a different color so that way it's coming through clear. There we go, kind of like that. That looks pretty good. I like that very much. Yes, so um, yeah, just laying in those perspective lines will really help you to establish some rules, even though it's completely cheated and our second vanishing point is like way the heck up off the top of our canvas. The very fact that we're just creating some, some lines, right, that kind of cascade like this, allows us to then kind of lower it back down right? And then when we made our canvas larger, then we're able to begin, um, we're able to go in there and fix our characters, okay? And actually, I did some modifications to these characters here that I liked a lot more. So let's go ahead and up-res this a little bit more, back to where it was. Let's go ahead and take that off 
and let's take that off. So now you can see, even though our background is very, very subtle, we probably could have cheated it from the very beginning. The very fact that we just have our rules in place, our rules in place, and you can see, oh, well, here's one guideline right there, and there's the other guideline, and then there's another guideline, another guideline, another guideline. See how these are all going back over here? Let me go ahead and grab another thing here. See how these are all going back over here? They're all moving towards our vanishing point, right? Or our cheated vanishing point in this case, right? And then we've got some other ones here, which aren't as important. The only place that I think we'll really be seeing these is I imagine if there's like a little castle wall right here, we'll see a little bit of that vanishing point like right here. A Little bit of that vanishing point going back right there. And same thing here. You know, but it's really important to establish that first one, the very, very first one. And then we also have like the, the third vanishing point that's going upwards, right? So actually I probably should have done these with different colors. So yeah, our third vanishing point, right? The Z space in this case are the lines that are going upwards. Okay, so that's going upwards. But all of these things are cheated. All these things are cheated. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about with iterative drawing and why it is so important that you guys understand that uh, your first idea may not be the one that sticks with you the whole way. Okay, let me go ahead and do this. Because we originally started with this. And this is totally boring by comparison. Oh, whoop, let me go ahead and zoom this out a little bit. So you guys can see a little bit better. But yeah, this first one by contrast is not, doesn't have nearly the amount of uh, like dynamic angle. It doesn't make you feel like you're there with the characters as much as this one. It just has so much more like depth. Right? There's like depth with this big, like the barrel that Mika's sitting on is like right close to us. And then, and then Mika herself, we're going to have the little ratty kind of right there. Um, since we actually moved the barrel down, maybe he'll be poking out of like a little hole or something. Um, and just like the, like, I love doing stuff like this where there's multiple characters involved because it, it has so much more of a potential to tell a story because one character just standing there, one character just standing there, like looking at you it, it, or like having like a weapon or doing like some cool thing, like a League of Legends splash. Like that stuff is cool, but do you notice how the splashes with multiple characters in it are so much more interesting to look at? It's because you have two living things that are um, interacting with each other, two living things that are affecting each other. And uh, they're, they're interacting and responding, right? They're reacting to things that are happening around them. And uh, I really find that that's a really, that's a much better way to create a dynamic piece is to involve more than one character, all right? And understand that uh, this is the main thing that I wanted to get into today with iterative drawing. And this is a little bit more of a mental game type of thing. And that is that you gotta understand that in the beginning, your drawings, right, or your ideas, it's okay to get to this point, right? And then to tell yourself, I just don't see this going the way that I want it to. I don't see this going all the way to the end and I'm gonna be, it's gonna be a picture that I'm gonna be proud of. You know, I could have taken this to the, to the final polish state and released it and everybody would have loved it. It would have been fine, but it wasn't good enough for me, right? I knew that I had something else that I wanted to tell, a better story that I wanted to tell. And that was going to be, oh, whoops. And that was, and that was this one here. And it's like so much cooler. Like I actually really like the, the armor pieces that they're wearing too. It'll be fun kind of refining that and making it look good as we go. But, um, Something that I told myself with this one is I wanted it to be much more cartoony. Like I want the, the colors to be sort of chosen more, uh, like a more calculated color choice so that way they can be more flat, right? So it almost looks a little bit more like an anime piece or like uh, something out of Disgaea. I think the, the artist for Disgaea does a really good job of picking colors but still having a cartoony look. Okay, so speaking of iterative drawing, there was this one here. This is the concept piece for Mika and Mocha. Uh, and this was the early thing that I drew that kind of inspired me to uh, do this piece, right? But about halfway through, right, I started this one, and then I was doing this late at night last night. And this is this is the point where I really want to tell you guys about the mental game. I got to this point, and um, I sort of like it was late at night. It was probably like midnight, g getting close to one, and I was just looking at this, and I was like oh man, I just, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Like, the, I'm such a hack, I'm such a hack artist. It's like these perspective lines, they're all cheated. People are gonna look at this, they're gonna know it sucks, they're gonna know I faked it. They're gonna know I tried to slip on by them and they're gonna be angry. They're gonna be angry and they're gonna tell me I suck, right? And I'm gonna know that I suck because I just, I don't understand all these rules, right? And I was getting a little bit depressed. I was getting a little bit negative, getting down on myself. And that's a good point where you need to realize that 
It's probably time to take a break. It's probably time to call it a day if it's the end of the day and go to bed, right? Because you've probably been working all day. You've probably been doing other things, expending your energy, doing other things. And then at the end of the day, it's not the best time for you to be creative and solving big problems. And, and laying out a piece like this where you have to consider like, like the depth and the perspective and how everything's gonna work out and like zooming the, the camera back and figuring out the background and the perspective lines even though they're cheated. All that stuff is problem solving, it's creativity and it's not the best time. Like you need to know your best time to do that. For you, it might be the end of the day. For you, it might be you know 12 o'clock, midnight, one, two, three in the morning. But for me, all right, the best things that I do at that time are actually rendering. Actually, just like when everything has been laid down and now it's time to just get in there and basically go into the zone, go into the render monkey zone, become a monkey and render the heck out of your drawing. The nighttime is the best time for me to do that because my it's like basically like low brain activity, right? But rendering in the morning, no, that's when I wake up, that's when I'm fresh, that's when I got all this creative energy, I'm just like ready to go, ready to problem solve. And sure enough, sure enough, when I came back to this the next day, like I had, I was, I think it was to like this point, or wait, where is it? Where was it? I think I started with this. Yeah, I started with this today. And I looked at it and I was like, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I know exactly what I'm gonna do. And then I got in there and I threw these lines in and boom, it looks fine, right? Uh, but I couldn't have done that last night. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about with iterative drawing. Oh, last thing I will say is look at this. This was another thing. Cause I was getting to the point last night where I was like, oh, I just feel like, oh, this picture sucks. It's, I'm trying to overcomplicate things. Maybe I just need to make a nice little, a simple one or just like their faces, right? <laughs> Something simple. And I did like this one too. It was really fun. But I was like, no, I need to like go back to my vision. And it's like, this isn't what I wanted. And uh, you know, maybe I'll do this one later, but, um, but for the time being, like I was getting frustrated and I just wasn't thinking properly. So that's a good, but it ended up kind of influencing everything, right? Because I really liked this face that I drew on Mocha over here. I really like this. And I also like the Mika face. Uh, they're both really cute. So using that and that, it really helped to translate over to the final piece, right? And that's what I really wanted to, to finish up with today, guys, is understanding that you have a vision, right? You have something in your head that you wanna create and you're gonna throw down these sketches. It's gonna be at the end of the day sometimes or it's gonna be basically at the time when you're not, right? Morning, evening, whatever. It's gonna be at the time that you're not at your best for solving your problems and being creative. And you need to understand that you can't be too hard on yourself there. You can't be too hard on yourself. In fact, I would argue that even if it does suck, you still can't be too hard on yourself because doing stuff that you're not comfortable with and doing things that you don't know anything about is the best thing that you can do as an artist because that's the point where you're gonna admit to yourself, hey, you know what, I'm still, I have a lot to learn, right? I am, even me, myself, I get down on myself. I say I suck. I say like, I, I'm supposed to be a professional. I should know how to do this stuff but I don't, right? And then and it excites me, it gets me excited because it, it, it's then that you realize that the journey has just begun. The journey is, there's so much more to learn. And uh, I think that's why, more than anything, I've actually been getting more excited about art. I feel like I'm discovering like a new land all over again. And that there's so much to, to just um, to do out there. And, and it has to do with creating not only your own scenes, but using your own characters. Kind of like learning how to tell a story, learning how to like experiment with different styles. It's kind of like that, that feeling of when I was just getting into art, but all over again. And I really want you guys to have that same feeling. So that's why uh, I really wanted to drive the point home today about iterative drawing and understanding that um, like sometimes you'll have an idea and then you'll want to go to something else, right? I would say just go to that, get that sketch out, get that idea out and um, and understand when it's time to take breaks. Understand when it's time to just go to sleep and relax. And uh, for me, what works best is just calling it a day at the end of the day, um, understanding that you might have to chuck it. You might have to chuck the piece and try it all over again. You always gotta be ready to, to just kind of push it aside. Use it as a learning experience, try it again. Try a new idea, try a new layout, try a new frame, try zooming out the camera, try zooming in the camera. You know, there's all kinds of things that you can do. And uh, and understand that that is just like a flowing process. When you're in that process, it just it's so natural because you're not judging yourself. You're not worrying about whether or not it's right or wrong. You're just allowing yourself to learn, okay? So, by the way, we're gonna go ahead and end today. So, again, sorry we're not doing the question catapults this time. We will next week after I get everything set up and like after I log back into MZ and get all that stuff set up. 
But yeah, we're going to call that good. So thank you guys so much for joining me on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Keen Lafferty. If you would like to get today's PSD, then just head on over to Patreon. Click right here. Click on the picture and you can download not only this PSD, but all the other PSDs from the past. And once again, thank you guys so much for all your support, both by telling your friends about the show as well as supporting on Patreon. It truly means so much. It truly means so much. And thank you for your patience while I was getting this, this episode out. All right, you guys take care. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, you guys stay awesome.